what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. And as you can see, I am joined by AZ, who's already in a match. But check out the deck that he's running, guys. Valkyrie, P.E.K.K.A., Graveyard, Archers, Arrows, Poison. Let's go ahead and hop into this match, see who's facing off on this live ladder video. It's against Love, who's actually a really, really, really good hog player. So it looks like a hog... Maybe some sort of a Hog Cycle NATO deck. And right off the bat here, you can see that AZ is connecting with that Valkyrie on that right tower, doing a ton of damage with just the Valkyrie. Now, as I was saying, every day I pretty much start out my days going on StatsTrail.com, checking out like the top ladder decks and seeing if there's anything a little bit interesting, maybe a little bit off meta that I can share with you guys. I'm not sure I would call this deck off meta, but I love a few things about it. I love the Furnace setting up for the P.E.K.K.A. in Valkyrie comboing with the Graveyard, especially in Double Elixir Time. I like the Archers are in here, and I also love the spells. I love that there's Arrows and Poison, two spells that you don't really see together that often. I think that obviously it's working for AZ, and I hope that it works for a bunch of you guys as well. I especially think this deck would be good not just at the top of Ladder, but also mid Ladder. It has, again, the Furnace, the, uh, the P.E.K.K.A. and the Valkyrie will do a a great job against Royal uh, Giant and, of course, against Elite Barbarians. So I think this is a graveyard deck that a lot of you guys can possibly have success with. So here we go, back to the match here. You can see setting up that Furnace on purpose not to catch that Hog Rider, trying to make Love split his damage here and keep that Furnace alive, potentially for a big graveyard push. Now, I don't think he's... Okay, he has used graveyard, excuse me. Sometimes I notice, because we did watch about five or six matches before I hit record, just so I could get a feel for how he plays this deck. Usually that's what I like to do on these live ladder videos. And I did notice a lot of these matches, he is not even playing Graveyard until double elixir time, late into the game. This is one of those decks, and we say it a lot here on the channel, but it's one of those decks that you definitely want to kind of slow down early on in the game. Just play defensively and take what your opponent gives you. So another furnace set up so it can avoid that pig push. So the hog could come down the left lane here after our P.E.K.K.A. dies. This is going to be an important defensive sequence on that left tower. Let's see what the opponent does. He comes down with actually a poison, which is his best counter to our graveyard. So that opens up, uh, oh, there you see it. Immediately the P.E.K.K.A. at the lane there runs right into an opposing P.E.K.K.A. So love was one step ahead of us there now we're forced to use a furnace here on defense definitely not what you want to be doing uh, dropping that furnace right in the middle of the lane but it still works out okay for AZ he's able to keep that left tower to 1697 meanwhile the opponent's tower down to 874 uh, let's see how he does here another hog coming down we have Pekka but we really can't afford oh a beautiful NATO by love there that was a pro play AZ gives him the well played now just like that we are in danger zone poison comes down to eight three hundred uh, 266, 227 in the 100s. We have a graveyard down here. A NATO comes down, 110. A log will finish it, guys. Can the P.E.K.K.A. get it? The P.E.K.K.A. got a swing at literally the last millisecond there. Man, what a great way to start this video, guys. That was intense. I'm going to come at you with the next match. I'm going to edit out the downtime. Be back in just a second, guys. All right, guys, I am still reeling from that last match. Oh, my word. I thought we were going to start out with a big fat L, but just a, a miracle P.E.K.K.A. swing at the very end of that match helps take down the tower, aided by the skeletons. And look at this. We're going against the Strike-O Show. He's been on the channel before, not playing Mortar, though, playing Royal Giant. So maybe I'll link the video that he was on before because he's a really good uh, Royal Giant player as well. But it looks like he's playing the Mortar Rascals Minor deck, which you shared on the channel a few days ago now with Midfinger, maybe last week. It was a really, really good video. And this is a really effective Mortar deck that we're going against here. So let's see how we can handle a Mortar matchup. Of course, we don't have Furnace in hand at this point. So he's forced to arrows against that Goblin Gang and that Miner on our right tower. So 3,100 HP remaining on the right tower. Meanwhile, the Mortar did connect for a, a shot on the left tower as well. So the opponent is the first to strike here. Let's see when he uses his first graveyard in this matchup, guys. Let's see how he handles this. So archers are going to be absolutely uh, <laughs> squashed there by that log plus one Mortar hit. Is he going to? Yes, he is. He's going to set up with a Furnace behind that Valkyrie. He really can't afford a Mortar lock, especially when the Mortar was at about half health. So now he has to essentially set 
sacrifice uh, some of that furnace there to the mortar shots. He only actually takes one mortar shot and one boy shot on that, uh, or one boy rascal shot on that furnace thanks to those arrows. And now he has to play some smart defense in the right lane. He has those archers ready, but the opponent does get the tower to 25-28. And only 20 seconds, around 15 seconds remaining in single elixir time here, guys. Kind of tells you one thing. Again, this is a deck that you played defensively in the first two minutes. Set up those furnaces, stack those furnaces, and just take what your opponent gives you. I hate to be repetitive there, but it's really paramount to having success with a deck like this. Especially as a graveyard deck in general in this meta, that's generally the tactic that you're going to be using. So here we go again against that mortar. Mortar again connecting with the furnace, which is way better than the princess tower. We do catch that miner using the P.E.K.K.A. A fireball comes down. I don't know about that fireball. I don't think the opponent really needed it there. Didn't do much damage to the P.E.K.K.A. Now we have arrows back in hand for this minion horde. Arrows come down. Now we have a nice little push going here. Of course, one of the archers taken out. Can he defend this? We still haven't used the graveyard. The opponent, think about it, from the opponent's uh, point of view here, I wonder what deck he thinks we're playing. I wonder what our win condition he thinks we have here because we have not played. He, he placed a P.E.K.K.A. there, maybe anticipating a Mortar or a Miner. Either way, he doesn't catch anything there, and a Miner does not connect. We catch it with a Valkyrie. Are we going to go in with Graveyard here? We opt to arrow those, uh, that Minion Horde. We have four, five Elixir. Is he going to use it with a Valkyrie? Use your, use your Graveyard, AZ! Use your Graveyard! <laughs> I'm just waiting for him to use it, but it looks like he's not. And again, the discipline. We have not used Graveyard yet. We are in overtime. We are in sudden death overtime. We haven't done much damage to the towers at all. A fireball comes down. Now's our opportunity, right? He gives the wow. Again, no mortar. A defensive mortar. No minor. We have the P.E.K.K.A. going in. If he doesn't use Graveyard here, guys, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know? So Arrow's going to come down again, ready for the minion horde. Finally, Graveyard has been cast 30 seconds into overtime. Poison comes down. That's actually going to be a very lucrative push. And just like that, we are back in this game, guys. The poison going to tick that tower all the way down to 1035, forcing the opponent to use a defensive miner. And that's really huge because not only do we get a hit with that mega minion there, but also they can't use that miner for chip damage, which is their best weapon in double elixir time. So now it affords us the luxury of going in again, perhaps offensively. So here we go. The Valkyrie doing a lot of work against that boy rascal. The uh, the girl rascal is taken out by those fire spirits. A log comes down. Uh, arrows come down. Graveyard is down. I think this is going to be it. How can they stop this with the poison down as well? And man, the patience that we've seen so far in this match from AZ really tells a lot about the strategy you're going to want to employ when using this deck. Let's go ahead and hop in to match number three. Alright guys, a nice little win streak, well, two matches, I don't want to overreact, but a nice little start to this video, let's see if you can keep it going in match number three here against Gold Shots. So another hog deck here, and again, we're noticing that furnace set up not to pull that hog, we do have some good hog counters, obviously Mega Minion not being ideal, that will allow three hog swings onto the tower, but we do have the P.E.K.K.A., so I think he'd just rather preserve the furnace, what about you guys, do you agree with that play? that he plays the furnace one tile lower to keep the furnace alive rather than distract that hog. What do you guys think about that play? Uh, I'm going to go with the pro here with AZ and say that it's a good call, but me personally, I've always normally seen people playing it in the safe zone one tile higher. Anyway, we're going against the Executioner here, so it's a hog XE NATO deck. The first deck that we went against, the hog deck uh, played by Love, was a hog P.E.K.K.A. deck. So certainly we'll be playing this. Ooh, look at that prediction arrows. I was going to say we'll be playing this in a different way. But did you see that prediction arrows against those goblins? That was a great play. But we have no answer for the hog. Again, forced to have the awkward uh, furnace there. But he's going to get the tower all the way down to 980. And then he gives the uh, spam of the constipated musketeer there from gold shots. So the Valkyrie is going to be answered with a Valkyrie of our own. 
Valkyrie, I said it at the top of the video, guys, but I think Valkyrie is just a nasty card, meaning good. I think that she's really effective in the meta. I know a lot of you guys are also a fan of Val the Valkyrie, and speaking of Valkyrie, she's going to go ahead and activate that opponent's King Tower. That was a really nice, smart defensive play by the opponent having his Executioner to take care of the Archers and then activating the Tower with the, uh, the NATO there. And obviously, if your opponent can activate the Tower when you're using a deck like this, it's going to be a big advantage for them because activated King Tower are especially, especially important against graveyard decks and against bait decks. And of course, we're playing graveyard. So we deny all hog hits there on that right tower with the P.E.K.K.A. Now he's he's happy. No predictive arrows this time. He's happy to let that P.E.K.K.A. not eat up too much damage. He goes in for the Valkyrie. Is he going to push with graveyard here? Is he going to push with a grave? Okay, he actually ju tries to juke out there some sort of a graveyard counter. The opponent does not respond, but Valkyrie's going to get a lot of damage and distract that King Tower while the graveyard does work. Did you see that? The King Tower was actually attached to the Valkyrie there while she was hammering away at that left tower. So now, just like that, we are back in it again with about 20 seconds left here in regulation. So a rocket comes down. How did I not re realize that they had rocket? So this is a do-or-die situation here. Again, a Valkyrie in the left lane. This is a really interesting strategy here with the Valkyrie. And then a NATO use against that P.E.K.K.A. trying to free up the Princess Tower to target those skeletons. We're getting a lot of damage from that Valkyrie in the left lane. We're getting a ton of damage and what's gonna- Oh boy! Another photo finish here in match number three. The rocket was cast. However, the poison and the skeletons doing some major work on that right tower. Able to take it down. Let's go ahead and hop in to match number four, guys. All right, guys, we're just going to keep going till he loses. This could be a long video. Let's see if he can hop into, like, top 20 ladder. Ooh, going against Shun. Shun is a CRL Asia pro, one of the best uh, CRL uh, Asia players, in my opinion. Definitely underrated uh, by some regard. He plays with game with, and he's really one of their star players. So it's definitely going to be a challenging matchup against Shun. And he starts out with a flying machine bar barrel. The first thing that I think is that three musketeer barbarian hut deck, because it seems to go be going around everywhere. Although the version that I'm familiar with does not have the hunter. So let's Let's see what he's playing here. But with Hunter and Flying Machine, two kind of fireball bait cards, and now Battle Ram, you have to think probably three Musketeer. So here it comes. It's going to be a P.E.K.K.A. going into that Battle Ram. Let's see how AZ decides to support this P.E.K.K.A. if he does at all. And immediately he's going to go in with the Graveyard. So we've been talking the whole video about how we want to play a little bit passively. I guess he felt he had enough of an Elixir advantage there or the timing was right to go in with that Graveyard. He's going to get a tremendous poison value. Not only is he going to do damage to the tower, take out those guards, but also take down that Flying Machine or at least leave it, you know, with a sliver of HP left. Uh, it does get one one hit on that left tower though. Flying Machine was like, yeah, screw you, Ash. I can get one hit on that tower. So here we go. It's the CRL emotes coming in strong here. The free-to-play emotes, which are, in my opinion, way better than the Black Friday deal emotes. What do you guys think? I think the free-to-play emotes are, are much better, actually. I think the Black Friday emotes were kind of meh. Kind of a little bit lackluster, in my opinion. What do you guys think about the new emotes? Let me know in the comments. And here we go. A Furnace set up, doing some damage against those Barbarians. Furnace, a great counter to the Barbarian Hut. He has some potential uh, poison value on the right. He either didn't have enough, uh, didn't have poison in cycle, I guess. I lost track while I was talking about emotes. But guards are really effective in Shun's deck, guys. And you can see how effective they are. Musketeer doing some serious damage to that right tower. Meanwhile, the guards shipping away at that P.E.K.K.A. I don't think he's going to go in for a graveyard here. He doesn't want to switch lanes at this point. He doesn't really have the elixir to afford to cast it and then be alive on defense. So forcing the opponent anyway, Shun, to play a battle ram to stop that P.E.K.K.A. there. But it does a pretty good job. Now he has barbarians coming down both of the lanes, two from the battle ram in the right, two from the barbarian hut in the left. And we have a hunter set up by Shun in the back and then cycling to another barbarian hut. Man, this deck is so annoying to go against, guys. And you guys can see, I've been playing this here and there in my 10k tournaments which I host by the way on Facebook about four times a week I invite you guys to join in it's Clash with Ash official on Facebook and uh, yeah I've been playing this deck and having a ton of success with it not this version though Although I might give this version a try. I don't play it with Hunter usually. What is the last card? I think it's probably a spell. Uh, it must be Fireball because I assume he would have used a poison 
uh, on the graveyard there. And he takes a lot of damage from that battle ram connecting on the right tower. Meanwhile, we have a graveyard down offensively, but the P.E.K.K.A. is also down. It's going to be easy defense against that graveyard for Shun. I don't know about that graveyard from AZ, especially against a pro player such as Shun. I think he'll be able to capitalize on that, and I feel like he has a pretty sizable elixir advantage. Probably about two or three elixir on AZ. Things are not looking good here. Uh, again, a reminder, 942 HP remaining on that right tower. We have archers set up to do a little bit of light defense on the left lane. This is going to be a big push here, but check out the poison value. We hit the barbarians, the barbarian hut, the tower, and the musketeer is on the right. We cannot, uh, we cannot uh, pass up on that opportunity. But now he's going in with a battle ram, flying machine, and musketeer on the left. Meanwhile, more barbarians spawned. We have the guards down. That's why guards are so nasty in this deck, guys. They really, really mitigate the power of the P.E.K.K.A. on defense for us. Now, meanwhile, a barbarian barrel and a fireball come raining down on the right side, forcing a Valkyrie out of AZ. Things are not looking good here, guys, at all. He really needs a do-or-die push. Oh, he doesn't need a do-or-die push. He he just needs a lucrative push where he takes off at least a thousand damage off of that tower. I make it sound like it's that easy, right? All he needs to do is take off a thousand damage off of a CRL pro player. That's all, guys. But he does pretty well. He takes it down to 1864. Uh, there is Fireball in the opponent's deck, though, unlike a lot of three Musketeer decks. So... You know, it's a matter of time here before he can be fireball cycled out. He has to remain the aggressor. However, he does give a fireball opportunity to the opponent here. I wonder if Shun will take it here. To me, it's probably an easy fireball for the opponent, but he opts not to. He opts to save the elixir. He has the guards ready again for that P.E.K.K.A., but not before the P.E.K.K.A. takes out one of the musketeers. The Mega Minion takes out the flying machine, so a nice defensive sequence. Now the fireball comes down after... That was a smart move there by Shun, too, right? When you think about it, he waited till that push. He didn't want to just throw away the three musketeers and fireball early. He waits till the three musketeer push had died down. Then he fireballs. There's a big graveyard push here, guys. Barbarian Barrel does nothing against it. Valkyrie almost gets to the tower. Archers are still alive. Poison takes out the flying machine and does a lot of damage to that right tower. 1160. Uh, well, we're getting there. 38 seconds left. 35 seconds left. Fireball comes down. Okay, here it is, guys. This is it. This is a do or die. Can we have another last second victory in this video? Please, Clash Gods, allow us to do so. Barbarian Barrel comes down. We need to poison badly. We're only at three elixir, four elixir, 470, 300, 239. No! Oh, man. Well, I guess the Clash Gods had to pay us back for those last second victories in the other matches because that all we really needed there was one or two more seconds and we would have had that tower down. But anyway, guys, I said we'd go to the first loss and then I jinxed them immediately there. We took an L in the video. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this live ladder series. It's one of my favorite series here on the YouTube channel. So stay tuned for more of it. Make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. Check out AZ's Twitter information, his social media, his player profile and stats, where I originally found him on StatsRoyale.com. And a huge shout out to my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. Check out his information as well. Guys, thanks so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.